Good morning, good afternoon. This is our first day of the World Championship and today the 550 euro tournament was actually changed to 400. So we are just about to going to, to register desk to sign up for all the tournaments and then we will head to lunch. We have like two or three hours before the actual first round will start so we will have some time to show you a bit of a playing room and yeah, let's go! <laughs> so the draw for the Monte Carlo Open has been made. There are like 70 something players, so that's a great result for the Monte Carlo Open since last year after Corona there was like 30 something, so huge improvement. And we didn't get the buy. We didn't get the buy, we've got something even worse. I have to wait, I couldn't start my match at 3 pm. Uh, even though I didn't get the pre-round, because there are rebuys available. So I have to wait like two and, a half, two and a half hours so somebody can rebuy to me and then I will actually get my first round, which will be a pre-round. So it's like two bad news in, uh, in one way. And yeah, so just get back to the hotel, we'll wait two and a half hours and we'll try to record the match and just rest for now and get on with it as we are just unlucky. Well, I can actually see a sweat on myself now, so I'm gonna help hop onto the shower and see you then. I have to tell you, it's always exhausting. When you come to a tournament, get used to the place, get used to the atmosphere, getting used to the weather, especially since during the day there is, I don't know, 40, 50 degrees. I have no idea, but it just feels like, I don't know how it feels like to be in hell, but well, you can't really say that you are in hell in Monte Carlo, but as it's so beautiful here, I mean, this is the view we are having from the rooftop terrace. Uh, but great news, we won our first match. It was a long fight. We waited a lot, but yeah, it was 0-4 down, 2-4, and at 2-4 we won Gammon on 4, so got to 10-4 and then somehow we won, but it was pretty exciting actually. We're gonna do some blunder analysis in a moment, so you can guys see what actually happened. And by the way, I spent like 9 minutes total and 8 of them, 8 minutes, was on one decision, so uh, that was a nice one. Let's talk a little bit about the tournament. So Monte Carlo Open, there are like 80 players registered. Uh, huge upgrade from the last time where after Corona, I believe it was like 30 or 30 something. So huge, huge, huge. Backgammon Galaxy, great success, way to go, amazing. Uh, and the tournament system is uh, single elimination with consolation. So you get basically two chances to cash. And consolation, what it means, basically short version, if you lose in the first round of the main, then you have to go all the way and just play, I don't know, eight rounds to, to win the tournament. But for example, if I now win four, five matches, then I will need, let's say, just two or three. So whatever I win in the main main flight, it counts. So all every win is very important. So happy to book my first win and let's do some blunder analysis. I've got my computer ready over there. So the first important moment started at a score where it was 2-4. Basically until this point, uh, I've just been getting unlucky. I lost the race, I lost the holding game. So not much happened. And we've got to this point where I was trailing 2-4 and I owned the queue. I was not in such a good not in such a good situation before, but somehow turned the game and now I'm blue and I own the cube on two. So think about the score. I'm 2-4. What's the mindset? It's 11 point matches by the way. 2-4 owning the cube. So you have to already start thinking like when should you cube? Well, should be like first advantage. Like if I lose this game, well it's 6-2 anyway. So if it's 6-2 or 8-2, I mean you know, you have to be already a little bit ag more aggressive, especially with the cube. And on the other side, of course, you have to be a little bit more defensive if you are leading in the score because you don't want to have volatile games. So these thought processes you should have or you could keep just while you play and just get some ideas over score. 
uh, over scores and just how experience go. You know, guys, what I'm talking about. Uh, especially about this position. So what was happening? I felt pretty good. I've actually spent. This is, this is one of the not a minute. I didn't spend a minute, but I was trying to bluff as I knew it was a pass. I waited maybe I don't know 15, 20 seconds before I sent the cube. Like, well, uh, I mean, you can just do it to relax, just to calm the game. It's not slow rolling here, by the way, uh, but just to realize what's happening, maybe think about some move and well, I always like to, well not always, but sometimes I just like to think and spend some time before I send the cube because well, I just don't want to give my opponent like a tell that it's just such an easy cube, right? I mean, this is not, this is why I don't think it's slow rolling or just doing something bad as like if I just double fast, well, first of all, I'm opening myself to that I can just make a lousy decision, that it can be just a blunder. And at the same time, I can give my open and a tell that it's just such an easy cube, for example, here. So I waited a little bit, I send the cube, uh, knowing it's a pass, uh, and my opponent ended up taking. But, well, still, I mean, the game is not finished, right? Um, but luckily, I was lucky enough to roll 6-3 and won the gammon so in the last draw i rolled a double force which put me to the gammon so yeah so this was a like a key moment of the match where as we can see it's a big pass but yeah i mean important moment of the game like if i rolled what like double force five four would have been over the other way yeah so yeah so this is the first position let's get to the second one so the score was 10-6 and this was the position I promised you, this is the position I spent like 8 minutes on, so what would you guys have played? I mean, tricky score, right? I mean, you don't want to lose the gammon, so leaving the anchor, big decision of course, like can be a match deciding, so I took my time and well, well, pause the video just so you can think about it as I'm gonna share the, expo I mean, I'm gonna share the result and you will see how actually close it gets, how close it gets and yeah, well, uh, the only two moves I was considering were at the end, I mean of course at the beginning I was considering everything 21-16, 6-2-3, 2 out, just running to the 13, I didn't like that at all and then of course 6-1, 6-3, but it's just such an awkward move, I was not comfortable making it immediately at least, especially when I had time, but yeah, uh, decided to play 6-1, 6-3 at the end also because i really didn't want to lose the gammon i wanted to keep the game going i guess because i just felt i've got an edge even though you can see i mean the gammon chances to lose are basically the same so well i mean i don't think i can be unhappy with the result when the decision i made was correct and that uh, uh, that the difference is just i mean 14 on the rollout it turned out to be 20 so pretty happy uh, this game I lost anyway, and I won the match from 10-8 after some volatile, volatile position, but everything went good, everything went well. Uh, so won the first match, gonna play the second one in like one hour, so gonna get some dinner, I guess, I don't know, something small, something light, and then try to win another round. So, see you there. As you can see, we've got our lucky backgammon coaching t-shirt, which, here's the logo. Here's the website, backgammoncoaching.com. So if you want to learn something, if you want to go to next world championship, study there, buy some courses and get some lessons. And the winner's walk. Won another match this time. Got lucky, just killed it, won every game. Played against a very very strong player, Arena Gueira, so very happy that I uh, needed the dice on my side. Yeah. Tomorrow, for the third round, I'm gonna be playing against Nick Blazier, who is gonna do the commentary for this World Championship. You may know him from the UBC commentary and all other tournaments, he's doing great, co great job commentating. So we're gonna play a match at 1pm I believe, and yeah. Just got to back to the hotel, I'm very tired as today was just extremely exhausting, first day, but well, so far so good, two matches, two wins, let's get going, let's take this down and now let's go sleep, so good night, see you soon.